Hi, this is Stu Schwartz from MasterMathMentor.com. This is Super Free Response Practice BC Question Number One. Super Free Response Questions are similar to the typical Free Response Questions in past AP exams, but instead of having the usual three or four subparts, these will have a great many more. It allows us to use the problem setup as a source of many inquiries that can be taken and allows us to do an in-depth study of the situation. Because of that, many calculus concepts are tested and some reiterated. Doing these will take more than the usual 15 minutes, but by tackling all subparts, you will know what topics you need to emphasize as you prepare for the AP exam. It is recommended that you go to the Master Math Mentor website and download the PDF with the actual problem and subparts. If you don't have a printer available, use a piece of paper for parts A, B, C, etc. This video will just show you the solutions, although you can fast forward at times to bypass the solutions and just show the problems. Problem 1 is based upon this situation. A resort has a large swimming pool. It is constructed such that there are two sections, a large deep water swimming area with a 20-foot diameter circular island bar in the center, and two shallow waiting areas on the outside for young children. The sections are separated by a submerged wall that people can swim or float over. There is a fountain at the point zero, 00 and a lifeguard positioned at the rectangular point zero, 030. The border of the areas are the polar curves. R1 is equal to 60 minus 30 sine theta, and R2 is equal to 50 minus 50 sine theta, where R is measured in feet. This problem belongs to a class of problems called polar curves. Polar curves are in the form of R is equal to F of theta. And usually these will appear on the calculator section of the exam, which means that we need to graph them. So you need to go into polar mode. It is important to determine the types of ways we describe angles, either with radians, where theta min equals zero and theta max would equal two pi, or degrees, where theta min is equal to zero and theta max is equal to 360. Many times it is easier to work in degrees to see important values of theta However, any derivative or integral calculations must always be in radian mode. Many times we will need to change a point in polar format, which is an R theta, to a point in rectangular format, x, y. We use the relationship that x is equal to R cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta. So if we want to find the slope of a polar curve at a point, we must first change the point to x, y, as we just showed, and then use the formula dy dx is equal to dy d theta over dx d theta. So in the graph, we can see that we have a tangent to the curve at the rectangular point zero, 02. Two important applications of working with polar curves are finding area and finding arc length. Many times you will be asked to find the area of a particular part of the graph. In this case, we have an inner loop and we would like to find its area. We need to first find the values of theta, we will call them alpha and beta, that define where the loop begins and the loop ends. And therefore we use the formula A is equal to one half 
the definite integral from alpha to beta of r squared d theta. If we were interested in finding the arc length of that section, then L would equal the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of R squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. In a problem of this nature, it is very important to spend some time at the beginning to fully understand how the graph is generated. We need to know where it begins, that means what happens when theta is equal to zero, and the direction that the graph is created. Both R1 and R2 have a sine theta in them, and when theta is equal to zero, sine theta is also equal to zero, and therefore R1 is equal to 60, and R2 is equal to 50 at theta is equal to 0. So that's their starting point. As theta gets bigger, then R1 gets smaller, and so does R2. So this graph is graph counterclockwise. As theta hits pi over 2, or 90 degrees, R1 is equal to 60 minus 30, or 30 and R2 is equal to 50 minus 50, or 0. So R2 has a cusp point as it hits the origin. As theta now gets larger above pi over 2, that means that R1 and R2 are going to be getting larger as well. So the path continues counterclockwise. As theta reaches pi, our values of r are back to where they began, 60 and 30. And they will continue on their counterclockwise direction as now theta will equal values above pi, and therefore sine of theta is equal to negative 1, and therefore our values of r will be getting larger. As theta hits 3 pi over 2, or 270 degrees, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So that means our values of r will be as large as possible. r1 will equal 90, and r2 will equal 50. And they will continue on their counterclockwise trip back to the original position. Our first assignment is to determine the polar points where the two curves intersect. We would expect that a number of integrations that we're going to have to do will use these values of theta as limits, so it's very important to get this correct. 60 minus 30 sine theta has to equal 50 minus 50 sine theta. 20 sine theta is equal to negative 10, and therefore sine theta is equal to negative 1 half. You should know these values. Theta is equal to 210 degrees, or 7 pi over 6, or 330 degrees, or 11 pi over 6. So the polar points are 75, 7 pi over 6, and 75, 11 pi over 6. Remember what these polar points represent. They represent the distance and angle from the origin. So one intersection point is 75 feet from the, uh, from the origin at an angle of 7 pi over 6, which is 210 degrees. And the other is 75 feet from the origin at an angle of 11 pi over 6, or 330 degrees. Three points for this problem, one point for setting the two equations equal, one point for the values of theta, and then one point for writing the points in polar format. If the values of theta are given in degrees, then only one point can be gained on this problem. 
Part B reads, there is a walkway that is tangent to the outside polar curve at theta is equal to pi, and we'd like to find its slope. We first need to represent our polar point by a rectangular point in the form of xy. We use the relationship that x is equal to r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So x is equal to quantity 60 minus 30 sine theta times cosine theta, and y is equal to quantity 60 minus 30 sine theta times sine theta. Next, we find dx d theta and dy d theta by the product rule. We get quantity 60 minus 30 sine theta times negative sine theta plus cosine theta times negative 30 cosine theta for dx d theta. And dy d theta is quantity 60 minus 30 sine theta times cosine theta plus sine theta times negative 30 cosine theta. Now we plug in theta is equal to pi and dx d theta is equal to 60 times 0 plus negative 1 times 30, which is negative 30. dy d theta, theta is equal to pi is 60 times negative 1 plus 0 times 30, which is negative 60. Finally, dy dx is dy d theta over dx d theta, which is equal to negative 60 over negative 30, which is equal to 2. Three points for this problem. One point for writing both x and y. One point for finding dx d theta and dy d theta. And then one point for finding the slope of 2. Part C is an extension of Part B, asking for the equation of the line representing the walkway. R is equal to 60 minus sine pi, which is 60. We would like to use our point-slope formula to find the equation of the line, and therefore we need our point in rectangular form. X is equal to r cosine pi, which is 60 times negative 1, which is negative 60. Y is equal to r sine pi, which is 60 times 0, which is 0. So the line is simply y is equal to 2 quantity x plus 60. Two points for this problem, one point for finding r and one point for finding the actual equation. D reads, there are two shelves on the submerged wall above the x-axis for which adults can place drinks. If these shelves are tangent horizontally to the wall, at what values of theta are they located? And it is needed to show how the answers are arrived at. We see on the diagram the two blue horizontal tangent lines, and we are trying to find the value of theta that generates them. To find out where lines are tangent horizontally, we set dy dx equals zero. That means dy d theta over dx d theta is equal to zero, meaning that dy d theta has to equal zero, while dx d theta does not equal zero y is equal to r sine theta, which is 50 minus 50 sine theta times sine theta. So dy d theta is quantity 50 minus 50 sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta times negative 50 cosine theta, and we will set that equal to 0. That gives us 50 cosine theta times the quantity 1 minus 2 sine theta is equal to 0. And we get cosine theta is equal to 0, or 1 minus 2 sine theta is equal to 0. Cosine theta equals 0 gives us theta is equal to pi at 3 pi over 2. At theta is equal to pi, we see a cusp point, and theta equals 3 pi over 2 will be outside the deep water section. So when we set 1 minus 2 sine theta is equal to 0, that gives us sine theta is equal to 1 half. And from there, we get theta is equal to 5 pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. And those are the two answers. In this problem, we get one point for setting dy d theta is equal to 0, one point for the two correct answers, and one point for the dismissing the other 
two answers. Question E reads, using correct units, find the value of d r sub 2 d theta at theta equals 4 pi over 3, and describe its significance in the context of the problem. Since r2 equals 50 minus 50 sine theta, d of r2 d theta is equal to negative 50 cosine theta. And the value of that expression at theta equals 4 pi over 3 is negative 50 cosine of 4 pi over 3, which is negative 50 times negative 1 half or 25. The interpretation, therefore, is that the distance to the fountain is increasing by 25 feet per radian. We see the blue line representing the distance from the fountain to the point on R2 at theta is equal to 4 pi over 3. We are saying that this is increasing by 25 feet per radian, which is 25 feet per 180 degrees divided by pi radians, or 0.436 feet per degree. For grading, one point is given for the value of dr2 dt at t is equal to 4 pi over 3, and then one point for the significance. It could be measured in feet per radian or feet per degree. F reads, Jack swims along the wall, separating the deep and shallow sections for theta between pi over 2 and 7 pi over 6. Jack swims in such a way that the distance between the fountain and himself increases at the rate of 2 feet per second. Find the rate at which the angle theta, measured in degrees, changes with respect to time at the instance when Jack is at theta equals pi. In the midst of this polar equation, we have a related rates problem. If we are told that the distance between the origin and jack is increasing at the rate of 2 feet per second, that is given dr2 dt. And if we would like to find the rate at which the angle is changing with respect to time, that's d theta dt. So we have a, have a formula that we can use that says d r2 dt is equal to d r2 d theta times d theta dt. We know d r2 dt is 2. We know that d r2 d theta is equal to negative 50 cosine theta. And we would like to find d theta dt. And therefore, d theta dt is equal to 2 over negative 50 cosine theta. So at theta is equal to pi, we get d theta dt is equal to 2 over negative 50 times negative 1 or 1 25th measured in radians per second. We would like that in terms of degrees, so we will multiply uh, our expression by 180 degrees over pi radians to get approximately 2.292 degrees per second. This is a three-point problem. One point for using our formula dr dt equals dr d theta times d theta dt. One point for our answer using radians, and then one point for converting that answer to degrees. Question G reads, a section of the shallow water pool is shown by shading in the figure to the right. Show the values of theta that generate the section, and you have to show how you got the answer. In our original analysis of the problem, we established the theta values, 0 and pi over 2, but now we are asked to show how we get them. So. We will first start with the deep water values, and we set 50 minus 50 sine theta is equal to 0. 50 sine theta is equal to 50. 
making sine theta is equal to 1, and therefore theta is equal to pi over 2. So we know that when theta is equal to pi over 2, we are at the origin. We also set 50 minus 50 sine theta is equal to 50. And we get 50 sine theta is equal to 0. Therefore, sine theta is equal to 0, and, and theta is equal to 0. So our values are 0 and pi over 2. We also have to show that that, that is true for the shallow water border. So we set 60 minus 30 sine theta is equal to 30. And we get 30 sine theta is equal to 30, sine theta is equal to 1, and theta is equal to pi over 2. And also, we said 60 minus 30 sine theta is equal to 60, getting 30 sine theta is equal to 0, and that gives us sine theta equals 0, or theta is equal to 0. Again, we get the values of theta are 0 and pi over 2. Two points for this problem, one point for getting the deep water theta values and one point for the shallow water theta values. H reads, a ray in the form of theta equals k divides the region described in E into two equal areas. We are asked to write but do not solve an equation involving one or more integrals that give the value of k. We know that the area of a polar region bordered by R1 and R2 can be written as one half the integral of R1 squared minus R2 squared d theta. Therefore, there are several ways to write this equation. One is one half the integral from zero to k of the outside green curve, so it's 60 minus 30 sine theta squared minus the inside, the red, 50 minus 50 sine theta squared d theta. And that would equal one half the integral from k to pi over 2 of the same integrand. Or you could also say that the integral from 0 to k of 60 minus 30 sine theta squared minus 50 minus 50 sine theta squared d theta is equal to 1 half the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 60 minus 30 sine theta squared minus 50, 50, minus 50 sine theta squared d theta. Two points for this problem, one for coming up with the correct integral expression and then one point for the equation itself. I reads, for each theta, let s of theta be the distance between the points with polar coordinates r1 theta and r2 theta. Write an expression for s of theta and then find s average the average distance between the polar points in the region described in part g. When we have two curves described in function form, if we take some value of x and take a look at f of x minus g of x, that represents the vertical distance between the two points. That is not true when we are working with polar curves. When we subtract the values, we get the distance between the two curves at different values of theta. For instance, in this problem, when we take a look when theta is equal to 0, we are looking at 60 minus 50, or 10. But when theta is pi over 2, we are looking at the distance to be 30 minus 0. So the average distance between the two polar points is the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 10 plus 20 sine theta d theta all over pi over 2 minus 0. We could do this without the use of the calculator, but since it's allowed, we will use the calculator to get 35.708 all over pi over 2 and our final answer is 22.732 feet. 
For grading, one point is given for s of theta, one point for the integral, and then one point for the final answer. Part J reads, find the area of the deep section of the pool. The problem seems very simple, but it will involve two steps to get the solution. The issue is that the deep water section is made up of the red curve on top and the green curve on the bottom, so we cannot do it with one integral. One thing that we will do, though, is take advantage of the symmetry relative to the y-axis. So we will work on one side of the y-axis to get our area and then double our answer. Our game plan will be this. First, we will find the area of the shaded region, which is the area inside R2. We will then double it, and then we will then subtract the area of the total circle. We will then find the area of the lower shallow section shown in light blue and then subtract that from the answer that we just got. And that should give us the area of the deep section of the pool. So first, we will find the area inside R2, which will be 2 times 1 half the integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, of our R2 squared, which is 50 minus 50 sine theta squared d theta. From that, we will then subtract the total area of the circle, pi times 10 squared. And that gives us 11,780.972 minus 100 pi, or 11,466.812. We next have to find the area of the lower shallow section. This is defined from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2. So our area is 2 times 1 half, integral from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2, of our outside radius, which is 50 minus 50 sine theta, quantity squared, minus our inside radius, 60 minus 30 sine theta squared d theta. And that gives us 1,244.686. We then subtract the two, 11,466.812 minus 1,244.686 to get 10,222.127 square feet. For points for this problem, one point is given for the area inside R2. One point is given for subtracting the area of the circle. One point for the area of the shallow section. And one point for the final answer. Problem K reads, find the area of the entire pool. Our game plan will be similar to what we did in problem J. Again, because of symmetry, we can work on one half of the graph and then double our answer. The strategy will again be to find the area inside R2 that we just did. But now we will then add the area of the upper shallow section, which is defined between pi over 2 and 7 pi over 6. So to do the calculations, we again find the area inside R2, and that hasn't changed. It is 2 times 1 half, the integral from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, of 50 minus 50 sine theta quantity squared d theta. We then have to subtract the area of the circle, the total area, which is pi times 10 squared. So we get 11,780.972 minus 100 pi, which is 11,466.813. But now we're going to find the area of the upper shallow section. And this is 2 
times one half. And this integral is defined from pi over two to seven pi over six of the outside radius, which is 60 minus 30 sine theta quantity squared, minus the inside radius, 50 minus 50 sine theta quantity squared d theta. And this is 2,187.164. We then add our two answers up, 11,466.813 plus 2,187.164 to get the total area of the pool is 13,653.977 square feet. Again, a four-point problem. One point for finding the area inside R2, one point for subtracting the area of the circle, and then one point for the area of the upper shallow section, and then one point for the final answer where those two areas are added. L reads, the shallow section is two feet deep, and the deep section is five feet deep. The pool is filled with two high-pressure hoses that pump 22.5 gallons per minute, which is three cubic feet per minute each. We would like to know how long it would take to fill the pool. There is no calculus here. All we need to do is find the volumes of each section and then figure out the time it takes to fill each section. For the deep section, our volume is 10,222.127 square feet times the depth 5 feet. And we divide that by 6 cubic feet per minute as there are two pressure hoses at 3 cubic feet per minute. This gives 8,518.439 minutes. For the shallow section time, we take the areas we had in the last two sections, 1,244.686 plus 2,187.164 square feet, multiply it by its depth, which is now 2 feet, and again divide by 6 cubic feet per minute to get 1,143.950 minutes. Adding up the two values, we get 9,662.389 minutes, which is approximately 161.040 hours, and that would be approximately 6.7 days. A three-point problem, one point for the section's volume, one point for the section's time, and then one point for the final answer. Question M reads, if Jack swims along the wall of the deep water section of the pool, how far does he swim? This is an arc length problem, and therefore we will use our arc length polar formula that says that the arc length is equal to the integral from alpha to beta of the square root of r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. Again, we will use symmetry to calculate the arc length of one side of the pool and then double it. So to swim the upper section of r2, our arc length is 2 integral from pi over 2 to 7 pi over 6 of the square root of our r 50 minus 50 sine theta, and that gets squared, plus dr d theta, which is negative 50 cosine of theta, and that gets squared as well, d theta. This turns out to be exactly 2 times 100, or 200. To swim the lower section of R1, our arc length will be 2. The integral will now run from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2 of the square root of our r, which is 60 minus 30 sine theta, that gets squared, plus our dr d theta, negative 30 cosine theta, that gets squared as well, d theta, which is 2 times 90.49, or 180.981. 
and now we add the two answers to get 380.981 feet. A four point problem, one point for the limits of the top integral, one point for the limits of the bottom integral, one point for the integrands of both integrals, and then one point for the final answer. Question N reads, if Jill walks the perimeter of the pool, how far does she walk? This is almost exactly like question M using the arc length formula. We first walk the upper section of R2, and our arc length will be 2. Now our integral will run from pi over 2 to 7 pi over 6, and our integrand will be the square root of our r squared, or 60 minus 30 sine theta, quantity squared, plus its derivative, negative 30 cosine theta, squared d theta. This becomes 2 times 109.983, or 219.966. The lower section of R1 will be 2 integral from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2 of the square root of our R, which is now 50 minus 50 sine theta quantity squared plus negative 50 cosine theta quantity squared d theta. This becomes 2 times 100 or 200. We add the two together and we get 419.966 feet. If we compare this to the answer on question M, it makes sense because she is clearly walking further than Jack swims. Points are allocated here just as they were in question M. One point for the limits of the top integral, one point for the limits of the bottom integral, one point for the integrands of both integrals, and then one point for the final answer. Part O reads, write an expression that represents the distance from the lifeguard to any child in the upper shallow section who is against the wall of the deep water section. To do this, we will use our distance formula that says that the distance between any two rectangular points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, can be expressed as the square root of x1 minus x2 quantity squared plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared. We know that the lifeguard is at the regular rectangular point 0, 30, and we can rep represent our point on the wall as, in, as x is equal to r cosine theta, which is 50 minus 50 sine theta cosine theta, and y is equal to r sine theta, which is 50 minus 50 sine theta times sine theta. So therefore, the distance will simply be the square root of 50 minus 50 sine theta quantity times cosine theta squared plus 50 minus 50 sine theta quantity times sine theta minus 30 quantity squared. So one point for changing the polar form to parametric form and one point for the answer. For part P, we will limit theta from 0 to pi over 2, and we would like to find the value of theta that minimizes this distance in O, and also find this minimum distance from the lifeguard to any child. This is a calculator problem. We will graph the expression in O in function mode using x instead of theta. And we will graph this for x between 0 and pi over 2. And we get the blue curve as shown. We are interested in the minimum value. And we can use the minimum feature on the calculator and we get x is equal to 0.814. Plugging that value back into RD, we get 22.156 feet. If we were asked to justify our answer, 
we could not use the minimum feature on the calculator. We would have to graph dd dx and realize that the minimum would occur when dd dx would switch from negative to positive. We show that with the orange curve on the screen. However, since we are not asked to justify our answer, we can certainly use the minimum feature. Two points for this problem, one point for finding the value of theta, and then one point for finding the minimum distance. There are 46 points available for this question. There is no exact formula for what number of points will constitute a 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1 on the AP exam. However, these percentages are what have been used in the past based upon exams released by the College Board. While you can extrapolate for just this question, realize that this question only tests a limited number of AP topics. So it is recommended that you do a number of the super free response questions in this series. Then combine your results, total your points, and then use these percentages to get a feel for how you will do in the AP exam and, more importantly, what concepts you need to strengthen in order to approve your score.